Welcome back, Twisters, and hey there, hockey fans. Nick here, and today I'm going to give you my predictions for the upcoming 2021-22 NHL season. So the way that I'll do this, I will predict each division from bottom to top, and, and then after that, I will give my award winners for the major categories, and then we'll take a look at who I have winning the Stanley Cup. Of course, I want to know your season predictions down in those comments down below. And if you're new to this channel and you like all things hockey history, hockey culture, and just following the NHL in general, be sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and join the Twist Brigade. We're over 2,100 strong. Now, the way that I make my predictions is a little bit bold, so I do expect you guys to disagree down there. But nonetheless, do keep in mind that in the 2018-19 season, I did predict the Blues to win the Stanley Cup the next year, I predicted the Philadelphia Flyers, and they were a Game 7 away from the Conference Final. And this past season, I predicted the Carolina Hurricanes. They ran into the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, let's kick off my predictions with the Pacific Division. And at the very bottom, as sort of an anti-jinx for my favorite team, I've got these guys, the San Jose Sharks. They've missed the playoffs the past couple of years. They've got some veterans who are just not performing up to par. But nonetheless, I expect a little bit of a youth resurgence with guys like William Eklund and Jasper Weatherby joining the fold. Better goaltending this year, let's hope so. Totally uh, different guys in net there. Number seven, I've got the Anaheim Ducks. I think they're still one or two years away from you know contending for a playoff spot, but we'll see a lot of what is to come for this franchise with guys like Zegras and Drysdale in the fold. Number six, this might be bold to some of you out there, but I've got the Calgary Flames. I'm just really not that much of a fan of the way that the roster has been assembled there. I think Jacob Markstrom would need to play at least like he did two seasons ago to get this team into playoff contention. Number five, and this is a team who I think could finish anywhere as high as third, and that's the Vancouver Canucks. They had a terrible season last year, but that was a bit of a write-off given COVID and, and a couple of key injuries they had there. But nonetheless, I'm not entirely sure that they can, I guess, go back to that level that they reached almost two years ago. Number four, this is a bit of a surprise for some of you out there. I've got the Los Angeles Kings. I'm a fan of a couple of the veterans they brought in in the offseason, like Deneau and Arvidsson and Edler. And they have some forwards out there who I do think get a little bit overlooked, considering we're always you know, watching Andrzej Kopitar out there. Number three, and I'm sure a lot of you would have them at number two, I've got the Edmonton Oilers. They had a couple of forwards who last year had a down year compared to the season prior. Um, again, you've got Mike Smith in net, and he had a wonderful year last year, but I don't know if he's going to replicate that over the course of an 82-game season because their backup options aren't particularly strong. Number two, I've got the Seattle Kraken. I think they'll have a very good first year. They've got the best goaltending in the division. They've got reliable defense. And forwards, yeah, they don't have anybody super flashy, but they have an overall pretty solid group there as well. And at number one, I have the Vegas Golden Knights. They have always played incredibly well against the Pacific Division, and I don't see that really changing, even with Marc-Andre Fleury uh, departed. So I still think that they're going to be the class of that division. Now we'll move on to the Metropolitan Division. So at number eight, I've got the Columbus Blue Jackets. Obviously, they've lost a lot of players over the last couple of seasons who were part of playoff teams. Uh, they got some exciting young talent out there like Cole Sillinger. So I expect the future to be bright for them, but it's going to take quite a, a lot from them in order to get into playoff contention. Number seven, I've got the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, in this year, they should actually be a playoff team because they seem to be every other year. But I'm not really sure if guys like Rasmus Ristolainen or Martin Jones are going to be, you know, they were missing pieces in the puzzle there for them to get back into postseason contention. So I'm not entirely sold on them. It's up to them to prove me wrong. One reason is because they're, it's such a deep division uh, overall. And so I've got the New Jersey Devils at sixth. Uh, I think that that forward core has started to come together. Guys like Jack Hughes, he played very well in his sophomore season. Uh, Sh Sharon Govich is another name out there too. They brought in Dougie Hamilton. Uh, they've got Mackenzie Blackwood. I think he's going to rebound, especially with guys like Ryan Graves back there as well. So I've got them in sixth. Number five, and this is maybe a little bit controversial, I've got the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are decimated with injuries, but nonetheless, Mike Sullivan has managed, I think, personnel uh, when facing injuries better than any coach out there. Um, they should still be very competitive for a playoff spot. It's just that maybe they've got too much in the way of injuries facing them uh, at the beginning of this season. And I do want to make things a little bit bold here on this channel. Number four, I've got Gerard Gallant and the New York Rangers. Of course, you've got Panarin, Zibanejad, you've got Capococco and Lafreniere. Uh, you've got Igor Shesterkin and Net Norris Trophy winner Adam Fox. I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but I think that they could get into the playoffs even in that challenging of a division. 
Number three, I've got the Washington Capitals. Of course, you still have Backstrom, who's coming off a terrific season. Ovechkin slowing down maybe a little bit, but still a great winger out there. Um, I think goaltending of Sam Sonoff, if he's healthy and you've got Vanacek, that could be a pretty good one to punch there. And yeah, Peter Laviolette, I think that he wants this team to make some uh, progress, not just in the regular season, but into the postseason. So they got to get in in the first place. Number two, I wasn't really a fan of what this team did in the offseason, but I've got the Carolina Hurricanes. They still have a great forward core with the likes of Tara Vinen and Aho and Svechnikov out there and Marty Natchez. And defensively, they're still a solid team. Even though they lost Dougie Hamilton, they still have Pesci and Slavin. Goaltending, they lost Nedeljkovic for uh, very little, I have to say. But nonetheless, they still have Freddie Anderson and Antti Ranta. If he's healthy, he could be a very good backup option for them. And at number one, I've got Barry Trotz and the New York Islanders. They were able to keep most of their players, um, which really impressed me quite a bit. I just think that this team is very well composed overall. Maybe not so much for the regular season, but in this case... I just really like the personnel that they have, and that extends, of course, into the playoffs as well. Let's head back out west to the Central Division. So at the bottom of this division, I have the Arizona Coyotes, plain and simple. They lost everybody not named Jacob Chikrin and Clayton Keller, so they're at eighth. Now it gets, starts to get a bit controversial. This division is going to be very stacked overall with teams that could compete for playoff spots all the way from one to seven. So at number seven, I've got the Dallas Stars. And the reason why I have them down here is I'm just not sold, kind of like Calgary, on the way that they've pieced this roster together. In the offseason, they just seem to get older for the most part. You got guys like Jason Robertson who come off a great rookie season, Ropa Hints, of course, Denis Gurionov. But I don't know if that's enough firepower for a team that's really been lacking uh, the past few years with guys like uh, Jamie Benn tailing off and um, Sagan uh, you know, being injured last year. So I don't know if they have quite enough there. Um, nonetheless, i uh, got to give respect to uh, Hudobin and Ottinger as goaltending options. But who gets kicked off when you've got a guy like Braden Holtby coming in, right? So that's why I've got Dallas there. And number six is a team that I haven't had much faith in the last couple of years, but they proved me wrong pretty well last season. That's Nashville. And I just don't know if they're going to be able to kind of replicate that performance over an 82-game season. They were really hot in the second half. Played Carolina very tough in that first round as well. But nonetheless, when I look at some of the star talent for some of these other teams, that's why I've got Nashville just missing the playoffs. However, making the playoffs at number five, this might be a bit controversial, I have the St. Louis Blues. Uh, definitely a fan of uh, Pavel Buchnevich and Brandon Saad coming into the fold. However, they did lose Vince Dunn and Jaden Schwartz, so they certainly have some uh, personnel to make up for. But nonetheless, I think that defensively, they can still be a fairly solid team with a, with a guy like, of course, Colton Pareko and uh, Tori Krug to give them some productivity from the back end. So I've got them as a wild card team. I didn't say that earlier, but I've got five teams from the Central making the playoffs. I've got just three. That would be the Golden Knights, Kraken and Oilers uh, making it out of the Pacific Division. Number four, I've got the Chicago Blackhawks. So they get back into the playoffs on the back of Mark andre Fleury. I think that he'll have a very good season. Maybe not the Vezina caliber season he had behind that great Vegas defense. I think he'll do pretty well. You got Seth Jones there too. And I think that Patrick Hayden is going to have a monster year. He really has the past couple of seasons, at least offensively. And now that this team has some more talent, more talented personnel around him, I think that Doc is going to definitely have a breakout season. I think Debrinkit is going to be pretty much become a household name as well. So I've got the Hawks in fourth. In third, and this is pretty much because they kept Kirill Kaprizov and Kevin Fiala, I've got the Minnesota Wild. Now, I could see them sliding down even as far as fifth or sixth in this stack division, but the team has responded so well with Dean Evison at the helm. I know they lost a couple of players, especially some veterans like Parisi, Suter, and a guy like Carson Soucy, who I believe is an underrated defenseman out there. But nonetheless, with the coaching, with the electricity of a guy like uh, Kaprizov and the talent around him, a guy like Matt Zuccarello, I think this team should still be a playoff team in 2022. In second, I have the Winnipeg Jets. I'm a big fan of what they did in this offseason by bringing in Nate Schmidt and uh, Brendan Dillon. So that augmentation to the defense, I think, is going to help Winnipeg and help Connor Hellebuck so that he's not facing a ton of shots per game. I think that he'll have a very good season ahead of him. You've got guys like Nikolai Ehlers and Mark Shifley. He's you know certainly in his prime still. So I think this team has just enough firepower and very good defense and goaltending as well. And in first, I have the Colorado Avalanche. And of course, they lost a lot of players in the offseason. But I still like Darcy Kemper as their number one option in net. 
you have the best or second best first line in all of hockey and they still have some very talented forwards as well and you look at that defense you've got Kale McCarr Sam Girard Bowen Byram just this great youth movement back there so I still think that they should be number one but I don't know I see them kind of taking a step back at least in the regular season and finally we'll take a look at the Atlantic division so at number eight to no surprise the Buffalo Sabres need I say more right number seven this is a bit controversial here I've got the Montreal Canadiens so I predicted them at the beginning of last season to go to the Stanley Cup final and lose, and I was right. But the thing is, is that they've lost some personnel. Shea Weber, Carey Price, uh, they brought a couple guys in like Mike Hoffman, and you have the maturation ahead for guys like Caulfield and Nick Suzuki. But nonetheless, these guys have played a lot of hockey. There's kind of a lot of, not drama, I want to say with the Canadians, but there's a lot kind of surrounding them off the ice to where I just don't really expect them to be able to replicate their performance last season. Really, in the regular season, once Julian was fired, the team did not play well at all, but they were built for the playoffs. At this point, though, I don't think they have enough to get back into the playoffs. In sixth, I have the Detroit Red Wings, and I haven't really been following them the past few years, but I think that changes this year. They have great young talent with guys like Philip Zadina, Maurice Sider, and now in goal, they have a pretty good option in Nedeljkovic, although Jonathan Bernier played pretty well in his own right for that team. So I think that they're going to definitely take some strides forward, like the job that Iserman has been making with this club, but it's kind of a top-heavy division nonetheless. In fifth, I have the Ottawa Senators, kind of like the Red Wings. I think that last year was that year where they started taking that step forward. They have a great uh, forward core, young guys like Tim Stutzla and Josh Norris and Drake Batherson. And so I think that they're going to progress even more this year. There's uh, some hope that Matt Murray is going to kind of bounce back this season. So I like the way that Ottawa is starting to put things together, but they're not ready for the playoffs. I don't think just yet. In fourth, I have the Toronto Maple Leafs. They still have plenty of firepower with guys like Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander. I know they lost Zach Hyman, but nonetheless, I think this is still a fairly well-built club for the regular season. You've got Jack Campbell, who was great for Toronto last year, and you also have Petr Mrazic. So when he is used as a backup or as kind of a 1B starter, he can be excellent out there as long as he's healthy. So I think Toronto is still good enough in this division to make the playoffs and make it in as a wild card. In third, I have the Boston Bruins, and you just can't count them out when they have such a great top line with Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marshawn there. Uh, you've got Jeremy Swayman returning to the lineup. He had a great uh, season in goal for them, so it'll be intriguing to see how he how he progresses in a more starting role for this team. Charlie McAvoy on the back end, still a great defenseman. I think he's going to get in the Norris conversation this season. And yeah, you just don't really count out the Bruins to uh, get it back into the playoffs. So that's why I have them in third. In second, I have the Florida Panthers. I'm sure a lot of you out there will predict them to finish first. Uh, definitely a fan of some of the moves that Bill Zito has made over the years. Alexander Barkov, who is now extended for the foreseeable future. I think he has a monster year ahead of him. He really did last year as well. Jonathan Huberdeau, uh, Mackenzie Weger was a Great surprise on the backside, but now Aaron Ekblad is uh, back and healthy there. The uh, the linchpin for this team, or the sort of crux for this team, is going to be in goal. Uh, I don't know if Sergei Borovsky is ever going to play like he did in Columbus, but Spencer Knight is going to be quite intriguing this upcoming year. I can't wait to watch this team, especially because they got my guy Jumbo Joe Thornton out there too. And in first, I've got the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I know that they lost that sort of identity line for them with, you know, Coleman, Gord, and Barkley Goodrow going elsewhere. But nonetheless, when you've got maybe the best defenseman in Victor Hedman, maybe the best goaltender in Andre Vasilevsky, a guy like Braden Point, who is just absurd out there at both ends of the ice, and Steven Stamkos for, you know, if he's healthy for a full season. Oh yeah, and this guy named Nikita Kucherov, who might be like the best or second best winger in hockey. There's no reason why this team can't get back into the postseason this year. And uh, I'll say that they win the division. And then maybe they bow out a little bit sooner than expected in the postseason. Now let's get into my award winners here. Now, I'm by no means an expert. So I wanted to kind of go off on a limb with some of these. I don't want to just pick the same guys who are you know going to repeat or be finalists. I have a little bit of that in here. But nonetheless, I wanted to predict some uh, wild cards here, I guess. Okay, Hart Trophy. This is going to be a crazy one, guys. I got Patrick Kane. So as I said earlier, I see the Blackhawks making it back to the playoffs for the first time in a few years. I think he has a monster year ahead of him, even though he has been producing quite well into his 30s. So he's my winner. Connor McDavid, I mean, 
it's either him or Dreisaitl as at least a finalist. And I've got Alexander Barkov. I think he has a wonderful season ahead as well. My Norris Trophy winner I got from the Boston Bruins. I got Charlie McAvoy. He's finished fifth, I think, the last couple of years. And I still think Boston's going to be a great club. My finalists, I've got Kale McCarr. Why not? And I also have Jacob Chikrin for the Coyotes. Don't forget, guys, this guy was sensational this past season. My Vezina winner, I have Igor Shesterkin. Yeah, so the Rangers getting back into the playoffs. You got a Norris Trophy winner in Fox and a great pairing uh, with him and Lindgren too. So I'll take Shesterkin there. And my finalists, I've got Andre Vasilevsky. Why wouldn't he repeat? And I have Jack Campbell for the Maple Leafs. My Rocket Richard winner is Nikita Kucherov. I think that he'll be outstanding both on the ice and in press conferences. David Posternock, you can't count him out of the race and he'll be healthy for the full year. I also have Alex Dabrinkit. So Kane Dabrinkit, these guys are going to light it up. My Silky winner, he's been, I think, second the last couple of years. I've got Mark Stone. He's just fantastic at taking the puck away and anticipating where the puck is going. So I say he wins it this year. Uh, Braden Point is a finalist for me, along with Philippe Deneau. So going over to the Los Angeles Kings, I think he's going to have great impact there. I called her trophy winner for the top rookie. I'm going to pick Spencer Knight of the Florida Panthers. I think that he'll at least play half the games this upcoming season. And if he looks anything like he did in those two playoff games, he should win this uh, going away. And my two finalists, I have William Eklund for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, a bit of a homer pick there, but hey, playing on the top line potentially with Logan Couture, why not? And I have from the Red Wings, a defenseman, Maurice Sider. I think that somebody from Detroit is bound to impress in their debut campaign. And for the Jack Adams Trophy, which goes to the top coach, I'll say Paul Maurice. I think that he gets his due this year. And my finalists, I have a previous uh, Jack Adams winner, Gerard Gallant from the Vegas Golden Knights. And this year with the New York Rangers, I think they just get into that playoff spot. And I also have from the newest NHL club, I got Dave Haxtell. I think Seattle makes the playoffs and they do so with that defense and goaltending and Haxtell and his assistants. I like the guys that he's brought in. I think they get the job done there pretty well. And the moment a lot of you have been waiting for, I will crown my Stanley Cup champion. So what I have here is I have my Eastern Conference final matchup and I have my Western Conference final matchup and then I have my champion. So going to the Eastern Conference final, I have the Florida Panthers, yeah, winning a couple rounds for a change, but they will be defeated by the New York Islanders. And then in the Western Conference Final, kind of like the Panthers, I have the Edmonton Oilers, who've won, I think, one playoff series in the last 15 years. They win a couple rounds, but they fall to a familiar foe in the Winnipeg Jets. And then for my Stanley Cup Final, I have Barry Trotz and the New York Islanders defeating the Winnipeg Jets. You've got Zdeno Chara and Andy Green riding off into the sunset as champions, just really cementing Barry Trotz as a Hall of Fame coach. And uh, yeah, uh, in that new arena, UBS Arena, all those crazy Isles fans are going to probably tear the roof off that night. So that's who I'm picking for my Stanley Cup champion. Those are my predictions, guys. I hope you've had a good time watching this. And if you have, make sure to leave a thumbs up and comment down below with your predictions for this upcoming season and postseason if you would like. Oh, by the way, my Conn Smythe winner, totally going off on a limb. I'll say Ryan Pollock. Why not? So you guys let me know your predictions down in the comments below. Subscribe and check out the video description down below. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and check out our merch store where you can find snazzy toques like this in addition to tees, hoodies, coffee mugs, and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. Once again, I'm Nick, and I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.